One of the things I really like about Keyshot is that it's super easy to use. It doesn't take a lot of experience for someone to be able to produce passable renderings or animations. Now today I wanna to talk about animation and specifically the camera path animation. Most of Keyshot's other types of animation are very simple. They move either the model or the camera in one direction typically. Now the camera path is a little bit different. It actually allows you to create a custom curve in 3D space to move the camera along, almost like a roller coaster car that's on a track that you get to design. Now one of the downsides of the camera path is that some people can find it a little bit difficult to control, either hard to keep your model centered in frame or hard to update it. And today I wanna to go over some best practices and ways that you can get the most out of Keyshot camera path animations. Let's go. To download your free project files, visit willgibbons.com, click on the file vault link and either sign up or log in to enter the file vault. There you'll find links to dozens of project files and hundreds of other product viz resources. So to save time during today's tutorial, I created a Keyshot package file that we're going to use and it will cut out some of the time associated with setting up the scene. Once you get that KSP file, drag it into your real-time view and release. We're going to open the file, click open. And at this point, Keyshot asks, where should we extract these resources to? Now, the way a Keyshot package file works is it grabs all the associated textures, models, environments, things like that, and it puts it into a folder. So all Keyshot's doing is saying, hey, when we unpack this, where should we put it? And today I'm just going to work off of our desktop. You don't wanna click uh, resources because then it will put all of these items in your Keyshot library. Instead, go ahead and click browse. And for us, we're just gonna put it on the desktop today. So once your KSP has been imported, it should look something like this. Go ahead and hit A on the keyboard to open your animation timeline. Next, we're gonna to go to the camera tab in the project panel and we're gonna create a new camera to create our animation. Add a new camera and we will call this one Path Animation 1. Next, we're going to create our path animation. And the way I like to do this is by right clicking on our camera, going down to Animation, and then just choose Path. And what happens here is we get a new dialog box and it's recording the position that our camera is currently at. So if we change our camera, we can then add a new control point. So what I wanna do is click and drag in the real-time view to establish the next control point. And for me, I'm thinking something like this, and I'll move this down a bit, and I'll click add new control point. I'll continue along the path, and I want to say end up with something sort of like this. And I'll hit add new control point, and at this point, we're done. We have made the camera path. We have recorded three coordinates or places in our uh, space here. And we want to leave the rest of these settings as is and go ahead and hit OK. So the first thing that you see is that along the animation timeline, we've got this blue bar. This indicates our animation we built. Actually, what it is, is it's a transform. It is a camera transform and it's transforming our camera through space. So if we click and drag above the blue bar, we can scrub through the animation timeline. And in the real time view, we will see the animation or the transform being played back. Now, unfortunately, you're probably wondering why the model is not staying centered in our view. So we're gonna fix this, don't worry. But in order to work on this, we're going to open the geometry view. So go ahead and hit M to close the library panel and O to open the geometry view. Oh, if yours is not docked on the left-hand side, it probably won't be. Grab by the word geometry view, left click and drag all the way over until your screen becomes blue and then let go. That should allow you to dock it. Now from here, if you left click and navigate through the geometry view the same way you would do in the real-time view, you will see that the geometry view gives us an overview of our scene. We have various lights throughout the scene. Those are the uh, squares that you're seeing. We have our model in the center of our scene right here. We have our camera pointing at our model. The red square is the field of view. So that is showing us what is being able to uh, be shown in the real-time view. And then we have this camera path. 
And along this camera path, which is the red swooping arc, we have these different cameras. There are three. These are called control points, and we are able to manipulate those control points to shape the camera path. Right now, our model is not staying centered in the frame of our animation. And this is because we don't have a camera target. If you can see in the geometry view, as we scrub along the timeline, the field of view, the red square, is not staying focused on our product. And that's why it's not showing up or remaining in the middle of our frame. So we're going to fix this by setting a target. All we need to do is click on the blue animation in our timeline, and then we get the animation properties down below on the right hand side. If you're looking to take your Keyshot skills to the next level, then check out the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Inside, I share the exact process I've used and refined over the past 10 years to deliver renderings to some of today's most recognized brands, with over 15 hours of content broken into 100 plus bite-sized, beginner-friendly videos, this is the most comprehensive Keyshot course available. When you enroll, you will learn how to turn a boring CAD model into beautiful photoreal images. Stop wasting time searching for tutorials on YouTube and fast track your learning by enrolling in the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. Click the link in the description below to learn more and see what other customers have to say about it. So I'll drag those up so you can see what I'm looking at. Over here on the right side, we have the option to leave it set to walkthrough or target. And we're going to change it to target. Now we're not quite done. We need to select a target. So we'll click on pick and we get a list of parts in our scene that we can choose from. And I want to click the top level of the power bank. This is choosing the model. And when you do that, it will find the center point of this model. And that's what it's going to focus on. So I'll click on power bank. We see the orange outline and we hit OK. So immediately our model is snapped to the middle of our frame. And to uh, help with this, we're going to go to our camera uh, grid and set it to halves. This way we have a vertical and a horizontal line and where the intersect is the middle of our frame. Okay, so let's try scrubbing along our timeline now and you'll see that our product stays pretty well centered in the middle of the frame. That was the biggest thing we had to do. For the most part, that's going to solve most of your issues with a camera path animation looking strange. But what if we wanna make some updates or some edits to this? Well, that's where the geometry view comes into play. So for example, let's say we want to finish our animation and we don't like how this is framed. We don't like how the bottom of the product is so close to the edge of the frame and I want to center it a little bit more. Well, we can do this by making a change to the control point in the geometry view. So I'm going to click on this last camera and it should highlight yellow. The reason we don't see it highlight is because our active camera is overlapping it. So if you scrub back a little bit, you'll see the control point that you select in the geometry view turns yellow, and then that means that we can now edit it. What I wanna do is move my active camera to the end of that timeline, so we're seeing the position of that control point. So select that last control point, and then right click on it and choose move control point, and we should see the option to drag this in one of three directions. As we drag this, we will see the real-time view update. So if we move this to the right a little bit, you should see in the real-time view, it moves to the left slightly. So as I nudge these arrows around, I should see the updates in real time, and this will help me center my product in the frame. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if we want to make a change to any of the other control points, we just follow the same process. I'll hit the green checkbox to accept that location. And if I scrub back, we can see that about halfway through the animation, this is where we're looking. If I want, I can move this control point the same way, select it, right click, move control point, and we can see I could kind of move this down or over, maybe further away. If you make a big arc over your product and at one point the camera becomes vertical, like up and down, it will cause an unwanted effect in which your camera will spin a 180 throughout the animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can reproduce this. Let me go ahead and get a little closer. I think that that'll do it. What happens is if we play this back, you'll see that in the real-time view, it does this weird rotation that I don't totally want. Um, that's not horrible, but in the geometry view, you can see what'll happen is at some point, the camera becomes vertically oriented. Right here, our red camera is up and down 
more from this angle. And as soon as we pass that vertical, uh, once it goes past vertical, it kind of swivels around, does a quick rotation. So if you're not careful by taking this arc uh, over the product so that your camera becomes vertically oriented, that's where you can get some strange, chaotic rotation that you're not gonna want. My biggest uh, suggestion for you is try not to let your camera path orient the camera vertically. So in this case, to avoid it, what I wanna do is move my camera so it's not quite so high up and down at a lower angle, maybe a little further away. There we go, so I'm happy with this. If I scrub through the timeline, we can see we are basically doing this kind of complex rotation and orbit that would be really difficult to do if we were not using the camera path animation. And the one thing I noticed that I don't really love about this, if you watch in the real-time view, right here it pulls out, then in, then out again, and it kind of looks weird. I don't really like that. I kind of want it to not look so jarring. Like I want it to have a nice smooth arc. And the reason it's looking like that is because the distance my camera is from the animation here changes. Our, anima or our camera gets a little bit closer, then a little further, then a little closer, then a little further. So the way we can work with addressing this is by changing the tension on the path. So if we look down in the settings on the right, the properties for this animation, we have the option to change tension. If I take tension all the way to the right, the camera path becomes just a straight line between two points. And this looks really unnatural. If we take it to its default setting of zero, it's what we started with. And it's not too bad, but I don't love it. And here's what I find helps a little bit. If we go the opposite direction, watching the geometry view, what happens is I drag the tension to the left, it kind of bows our path out. If I go ahead and move along this path now, in my mind, it looks a little bit smoother. It's not perfect. Minus 0.5, maybe uh, minus 0.3. You can play with that value to see exactly what you like. But to me, it smooths things out quite a bit. And of course, if you really wanted to, you could add another control point just to move it further away. I try to keep my camera path animation curves as simple as possible. I try not to add more than three control points. But if you need to, you can always go and right click on a control point and choose add control point after. So at this point, you can see what that did. It kind of created a weird wobble in our animation. And this is why I try not to add them after the fact. It can look a little bit weird. But of course, we can always go in and move this control point. So let's say I wanna pull this out a little bit. You can play with it. If we take some of the tension we put on there or took away, out, that'll smooth this out quite a bit as well. So now our camera's not coming in so close before finishing. I just preferred the way it looked before, so I'm gonna right click on this control point and delete it. So now we're back to where we were, and I'll use my negative 0.3 to uh, take away a little bit of tension on there. So generally speaking, those are the big steps. Now, if we wanna take this up a notch and make it a little bit more interesting, we can also do something called motion easing. That's down below the time settings. Right now it's set to linear, meaning it moves the same speed all the way through. And if you wanna play it back, you can always hit this play button to see how long it's taking to move through that uh, animation. If we don't want it to repeat, just click on this little button here, the loop button, turn that off. Now what I wanna do is change the motion ease from linear to custom. We're gonna put a S curve on this, and this is going to be akin to speed ramping. This will make things, you know, when they go fast, then slow, then fast. This is basically what we're doing. Now in this little box down on the right, we're gonna take the first control point, this Bezier handle, hold shift and drag it down and to the right, and then do the same for the other Bezier handle. This creates what's called an S-curve. So the way to interpret this green line is that to the right, is time on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis is the position. So once we've added our s-curve, if we scrub through our timeline, you can see that it starts out slow, and then it kind of speeds up in the middle, and then slows back down toward the end. The more aggressive you make this s-curve, the faster it will go in the middle. 
So the more vertical this green line gets, the faster it goes. So if we play this back now, it's gonna snap from one position to the other. Now I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. And the way we can do that is grab our blue box in the timeline and I'm just gonna drag it down to four seconds. So now instead of five seconds, it's only four seconds long. Cool, so I'm happy with this, but there's one major limiting factor that you might have noticed, and that is that once we established a camera target, our product stays centered in the frame, meaning it's always in the middle. What if I want my product to be off-centered so I have room to add some text callouts or something like that, which is a pretty common thing to do. We're gonna go on over to the scene tree, hit Control-1 on the keyboard, and that's gonna add a cube to our scene. We're gonna go ahead and take our cube and grab under the advanced option here, click on this crosshairs, and then choose the power bank once again. Now we're gonna click on uh, this snap to pivot to snap the cube to the middle of the power bank. And lastly, I wanna scale this cube down a little bit. So in the scale properties under the scene tree, I'm just gonna pull that down a little bit. There we go. So at this point, what if we actually made our camera target the cube and not our product? Well, we can also do that. We can click on our animation and change our target. So click pick. And then this time we're gonna choose our cube and I'll hit okay. But what if we move the cube now? I can go to the scene tree, grab the cube, hit the move tool, click on global to make the axis in the right location or uh, orientation. Now, if I drag this to the right and hit okay, and I adjust my timeline, you'll see now we have snapped the cube back in the middle of the frame, which pushes our product off to the left. This gives me the control I need to still have the same path of motion, but control how the object is framed up. We can push it all the way off to the side or whatever we need. Now we can take it a step further and actually animate the position of that cube. So let's say we wanna start with our product off center, but finish with it centered. Go ahead and move that cube uh, over a little bit further. And when I, again, scrub the timeline, it updates, great. So the product is now off to the left, but I wanna finish it not off center like it is, but centered, very easy to do. All we do is animate the cube. Grab the cube, right click, add animation. Sorry, that's off screen. We're gonna choose translation. Go ahead and set the translation uh, Y to zero. And in this case, we wanna just translate it along the Z axis, so left to right. Right now, the translation's happening over one second, so let's drag it out to a full four seconds so it matches. Now, all I need to do is change the translate Z value. So if I try like 20 and hit enter, now it pushes it further in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna choose a negative value for 20, maybe minus 25, close enough for me. So that's pretty much all we need to do. And we could you know, make a move up or down or whatever. But now what's happening is if we go back to the beginning, we're starting with our product off-centered and we still have our path animation defined as we want with the custom curve. And we also have that cube as the pivot moving our camera in the right location. If you want, you can actually have that cubes uh, speed curve match that of the original camera path. And the way we would do that is actually go to the first camera path that we made. We can right click and copy the curve down here where the green S is. Go to the cube, change it from linear to custom and right click and paste curve. And now if we play them back, it's almost as if you can't tell that they're two separate animations. So at this point, uh, we just need to make that cube disappear, and that's actually surprisingly easy. Double click on it. We're gonna change it to an emissive material, set its color to black, take its intensity down to zero, and turn off visible to camera, visible in reflections, and two-sided. Now we can't see it, but to be extra sure, we're going to scale it down. So in the scene tree, take its scale down to one, That'll be one millimeter. Now it's embedded within the middle of our product and uh, we truly are not gonna see that when we go to render. So back, I'm gonna turn off my camera guides. And um, at this point, I'm just going to go through and render this out. But now you know, hopefully, how to get the most out of camera path animations. Keep them simple. Use the geometry view to make edits. Choose a camera path to keep your product centered and then if you need to, choose an alternative camera path on a primitive piece of geometry and then animate that as needed. 
I really like working this way. This is how I've done a lot of my professional animations for big clients, and I encourage you to give it a shot. Till next time, happy rendering.